Hello, welcome to the College Wise Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us today. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. And if your question is for a specific school, please make sure you name the school in your question. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So sit back, relax, and just absorb all of the great information coming your way over the next 45 minutes or so. This is just one of many different sessions happening. There are a couple more this afternoon. After this one, be sure to sign up for additional ones where you signed up for this one. Strivescan.com slash collegewise. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week. Again, the same website I just said, strivescan.com slash collegewise. We are in session D2. You can see it on the screen where I'm moving my uh, mouse over that particular session. We have five schools scheduled to present during this session and they will go in that order. So I've gotten all the housekeeping stuff out of the way. I will now step out of the way and turn it over to our first presentation from the representative from Boise State University. Thank you so much, Russ. All right, well, hello everybody. My name is Austin Moore and I am the uh, admissions counselor for Boise State University. Uh, I also did graduate from Boise State in 2017, got my degree in criminal justice, and um, would absolutely love to connect with you all and answer any questions that you have. So in that top right-hand corner, you can see that little QR code. Feel free to scan that with the camera on, or the, yeah, the camera on your phone. That'll bring you to our little virtual contact card, but it'll also give you my contact information. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Boise State is the largest four-year public institution in the state of Idaho. We are truly located right in the heart of the capital city. You can see here on the screen, our main campus kind of down towards the bottom, uh, and then where our state capital and the metropolitan downtown area are just right above that. So from campus into downtown Boise is truly about a 10 to 15 minute walk. Right there in the middle where all, that, all, all the trees and all the greenery is, that is the Boise River. So the river runs right directly next to campus. You can walk along the Greenbelt and the river to get to any of the academic buildings or any of our residence halls or sports facilities. Absolutely beautiful, especially this time of year in the fall. And then being on campus, we do offer um, over 15 Division I sports, uh, over 180 different majors and minors to choose from, over 200 student clubs and organizations, and we are almost 50-50 in-state to out-of-state. Now, we are also, uh, but I, like I mentioned, the largest public institution, but just over 26,000 total students at Boise State. That second number, though, is going to be kind of our main on-campus population with just between 17 and 18,000 full-time undergrad students. So absolutely, you get the, the perks of that big city feel, the perks of the big school. But what's kind of nice is our average class size is only 31 students right now. So I absolutely got to know every one of my professors on a first-name basis. Everybody in my academic major was able to graduate in four years, no problem. Um, so it kind of is that smaller school feel when you look at the academics, but definitely the big school amenities. And then these are some of the top 10 lists that we've been on as a capital city, um, as a university. We are not only just close to downtown, but we also have a lot of great outdoor opportunities, floating the river, uh, mountain biking, hiking, camping, skiing, and snowboarding all right around campus. Our local ski resort is only 16 miles from campus. So one of the top three universities for outdoor adventure as well. One of the things that got me here and what's kept me here for about seven years. But we do also, when it comes to academics, offer like I mentioned, over 180 different majors and minors for our students to choose from, which can be a really helpful resource if you're not quite sure what you wanna study. Uh, it can also be a little bit overwhelming. So I like to also show our top 10 most popular majors chosen by our incoming first year students. This just kind of shows that we have everything from business to engineering, nursing, health science, computer science, psychology, kinesiology, biology. Uh, like I mentioned, I got my degree in criminal justice you can see our number two most popular major for incoming students is also just general undeclared. So if you don't have a set idea of what you wanna study yet, you are not at all behind. You're actually in the majority of our incoming students put down undeclared, does not look bad in our eyes in the admissions office at all, still qualifies you for scholarships and admission. It just gives you some time to get on campus, take your first year or your first semester to take some general eds, work with your advisor and figure out what might be the best program that fits you. But I do wanna spend the last kind of three minutes on our admissions process as we have had some changes. So due to COVID for the fall 2021 semester, we will be test blind, meaning we will not consider your SAT or ACT scores for admission or for scholarships. To apply to Boise State, the first step is just submitting your online application through our website. We are not a part of the Common App. There is a $50 application fee, and then we will just need your official 
high school transcript. So your in-progress high school transcript, we use your cumulative unweighted GPA, not only for admission into Boise State, but we also look at that for our merit-based scholarships. So to go to Boise State as a non-resident student is about $25,000 per year. We do offer two automatic merit-based awards. We are a WUI school, but we also have the treasure. Treasure starts out, if you have a 3.0 cumulative unweighted high school GPA, you will be admitted to Boise State. You'll also receive the treasure scholarship of $8,400 a semester or a year for all four years. And then the WUI, which is um, the 3.4, it's 150% of in-state tuition. So instead of paying $25,000, if you had that 3.4 and were awarded the WUI, you'd pay about $12,000 a year as an out-of-state student. Also four-year renewable. Now, in order to qualify for these awards, we do have a uh, deadline of December 15th of your senior year. So we need your application submitted, your transcript into our office by December 15th of your senior year and in order to qualify for those awards. Now, we are not a competitive WUI school or competitive when it comes to the treasurer either. As long as you apply and meet that GPA requirement and we have your materials by December 15th, you will automatically be considered for those awards. If you meet the GPA, you will automatically be granted that award. No extra step to apply for scholarships or anything like that. So really just application, transcripts, and um, we'll get you an admissions decision within about two to three weeks. We work off what's called rolling admission. And then we are also um, having in-person campus visits. So if you'd like to come take a tour of campus, as you can see, I'm in my office right now on campus. We are pretty much as open as we can be for the fall. I have students living on campus. 50% of our classes are in person and we are doing campus tours. So if you wanna come check it out in person, we would absolutely love to have you. I really appreciate y'all taking the time to hear a little bit more about Boise State. I know my time is just about up. So definitely um, feel free to chat me any questions or if you wanna connect, I would love to answer those for you. But have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of, enjoy the rest of the presentations and I look forward to connecting with you. Thank you very much, Austin. And I will uh, remind everyone of the order of our presentations today. We are in session D2 as I'm moving the mouse over here. And I also want to remind you that if you have questions for any of our representatives, use the Q&A button on your screen. You can type those questions in at any time. Up next, we will hear from the University of Utah. Sorry about that. Now I will share. I couldn't find the unmute button. Okay. We had one more thing and I'll be ready. There we go. So hello, Jasmine Bryan from the University of Utah. We are a public flagship tier one research university located in beautiful Salt Lake City. If you haven't heard of the term one, it means we have the highest level of research on our campus. We have about 24,000 undergraduate students and our average class size is 23, so you're going to get to know your professors well. We're proud to be one of 65 members of the Association of American Universities, where members must be on the leading edge of innovation and scholarship. You'll see we are in great company if you Google the list. Stanford, Harvard, and MIT are also members. Our location is amazing. We are within 45 minutes of seven world-class ski resorts. We hosted the Olympics in Salt Lake. For a half day's drive from five national monuments and 10 minutes from downtown Salt Lake City, where students can watch a jazz game, grab dinner, or work an internship. Salt Lake City has been ranked one of the top 10 pro-business cities in the US. So many of our students will have an internship Catch the light rail for free and be back on our beautiful campus in just 10 minutes. We offer over 150 different majors and programs. We have our own medical school, law school, school of engineering, business, architecture, film, a direct entry nursing program, and so much more. I wish I could tell you about all the programs. I'm going to highlight just a few. The David Eccles School of Business offers nine undergraduate majors. Not sure which one is right for you? No problem. Start with business scholars. Business Scholars allows you to try all the areas of business before selecting the one on which you'd like to focus. We also have a student investment fund where students manage a $700,000 portfolio and gain invaluable experience. If you're interested in gaming, the you should be on your list. Our gaming major has been ranked number one by Princeton Review and our students have published 99 games so far. 
cutting edge research is the name of the game in our engineering department. We have 26 research centers at the U. Our freshman engineering scholars program allows first year students to tour the research facilities in the fall and experience weekly instruction in these same facilities in the spring. The Milken Institute ranked the U in the transfer of technology to commercialization as number one in the country. Our competition, Stanford, Caltech, MIT. Why did we do so well? We're all about putting innovation is into action as can be seen in the picture. That is a prosthetic arm called the Luke arm named after Luke Skywire, Skywalker. It can not only move, but feel. The Sond is all about creating your own company. 35 companies have been launched in the past two years. At La Sand, you'll find a 20,000 square foot innovation space. We hold monthly Get Seated programs that let students learn how to pitch their idea for funding. Once Lasan Startup Boundary Backpacks raised over $1 million to launch their company. Students can live in Lasan as well in themed living spaces. While not everyone might want to start their own company, many students are interested in having an internship. Hinkley allows students from all majors to have local, national, and global internships. As the U is located in the state's capital, students can intern for the state's legislature. Through Capital Encounter, students can work a paid internship in Washington, D.C. that includes a subsidy for housing. And yes, we have study abroad. We're affiliated with over 600 different programs, but you can intern abroad as well. We've had students intern over 50 different countries. We regularly have students intern in Australia and Jordan. Not sure about your major? No problem. We offer a major exploration class that starts with a self-assessment and then allows you to learn all about the majors offered at the U. With our LEAP program, students can take a class in the fall and spring with the same group of students and the same professor building a nice community. With GLEAP Global, you can take classes in the spring of your freshman year at our campus in South Korea. Our Student Life Center includes one of the largest outdoor adventure programs in the country. Students can rent any equipment they need for their next adventure or sign up for a guided rafting, backpacking, or climbing trip. And yes, we have plenty of skiing, snowboarding equipment available to students. We sell tickets as well, and you can catch a bus to take you uh, up to the slopes just 30 minutes away. He was a proud member of the Pac-12, our must or mighty Utah section has been a tradition called the third down jump. When our opponents are facing third down, our students jump in unison and it creates a seismic event, which is then captured by our engineering department. We are a common app school and we utilize holistic review, giving primary importance to the rigor of your coursework and your grades in those classes. We will be test optional for fall 2021 and 2022. Wooey, proud member of the Western Undergraduate Exchange, which allows students to receive a discount on the out-of-state tuition. Wooey scholars pay one and a half times the in-state tuition, saving over 16,000 a year. Wooey is guaranteed for all students from the Wooey state submitted with a 3.0 and above. Here you can see our in-state tuitions around 9,000, out-of-states around 30, and the Wooey rates about 14,000. We are not impacted, so you should have no trouble graduating in four years. We also allow students to establish residency. So if you're not from a WUI state, you can establish residency, pay out of state your first year, possibly receiving scholarships and financial aid in addition. And from then on, after you've established residence, you can pay in-state tuition, that lovely just over $9,000 rate. I welcome your questions. I'm a regional admission counselor for the U based in Northern California, uh, but you are welcome to contact me if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. And I will also remind everyone if they have questions during the session, use the Q&A button. It's right on your screen, either at the bottom or at the top, depending on when you're, where your menu is. And if you have a question for a specific school or representative, just make sure to make, include their name in your question. Up next, we will hear from the representative from St. John's College. Okay, um, thank you for joining us this evening. Let's see. Oh, I don't have a video. Let's see. All right. Sorry about that. All right. 
All right, I think we're good now. <laughs> anyway, I'm, my name is Natalie. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admissions at St. John's College, and I'm joined this evening um, by my colleague David Conway, who will be uh, available to answer some questions in the Q&A. Uh, before I get started, you're hearing from a lot of colleges, and I'd like to do kind of a quick self-assessment. Um, so read through these questions, and I will sort of briefly summarize them, but if you find yourself being one of those students who loves to keep talking in class, who asks those questions. Um, maybe you don't like it when someone tells you what to think or what to do. Uh, maybe you're in mock trial. Uh, maybe you're just one of those very deeply intellectually curious souls. Um, if you are, and if you've answered yes to two or more of these, I would invite you to keep listening to our presentation. So St. John's College is unique. We are uh, one college with two campuses and we have on the scale of small private liberal arts colleges, we are teeny tiny. We have 800 students total between the two, uh, two campuses. And we study essentially 3000 years of human thought across seven disciplines in just four years. Um, we do an in course, so we're sort of known for our inquiry based approach. We call it a Socratic seminar, Socratic inquiry. Our student, our faculty to student ratio is one to seven. And there's a couple things I'm going to kind of fly through here, but we have um, no lecture halls. The largest class that you're going to have at St. John's is 21 students. And this is a place where everyone's thoughts, opinions, experiences, um, beliefs come to bear on the conversation around the table. So we really promote and value diversity of every sort. And um, we only use primary sources, original source text. We don't use um, textbooks. And here's the kicker. We have zero majors, uh, zero departments. All of our students follow a single course of study for four years. And you're studying history, philosophy, um, theology, language, law, but you're also studying four years of mathematics and science. So you're learning math from Einstein, you're learning it directly from the thinkers themselves. So everyone graduates with a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Arts. Um, so you can do this program at one of two places. This is a, a picture of our Santa Fe campus. Um, I could have taken this today. We actually got about 10 inches of snow over the last couple of days. Uh, we are at 7,000 feet elevation. We're at the southern tip of the Rocky Mountains. Great little college town. Um, our second campus is located in Annapolis, Maryland. And just a couple of weeks ago on Jeopardy, um, this question came up. So it is the third oldest college campus in the United States, right on the water. It's beautiful. And students can actually go to both campuses. Um, they're admitted, if you're admitted to one, you're admitted to both. So a little bit about our student life. Um, it's very vibrant. You know, we are teeny tiny, as I mentioned, but we have over 80 different student clubs and organizations. Uh, you can join something or start your own. Um, this is just some examples, of course, student government. We have a lot of uh, yoga, Pilates, um, Iron Bookworm. We have a fun class. There's chorus and theater, um, all sorts of ways for you to get involved. So a little bit about our admissions and financial aid process. We do use the Common App as well as a couple other application systems. We, and we also use a holistic review process as you've heard from some other colleges. For us, apologize, um, we ask you to write a supplement to the Common App essay. And for us, that's really gonna be the focal point. We wanna to get to know you. Um, St. John's is probably not everyone's cup of tea, but we really are interested in finding those students for whom this is gonna be a good fit, for those thinkers, for those people who have, you know, um, a wanderlust of, of sorts for ideas. And we want to encourage you through your application to sort of get to know, know us as well. Uh, we did lower our tuition a couple years ago, so we are really proud to kind of rein things in. Um, so in addition to the $35,000 tuition for this education, we have additional need-based and merit aid. And the good news is that your application for admission also serves as an application for merit aid. So over 85% of our students receive financial aid. Um, our small size really does translate both to the admissions process and to the financial aid process. We can just take our time with you. We can help you appeal if this, you know, if the award doesn't work at first. Um, we really want to make, for those students for whom this is a good fit, we really want to help you get here. So a little bit quickly about what others are saying. Uh, Forbes magazine has called us the most rigorous college in America. We rank pretty well with Princeton Review and US News and World Report. But I think the question on everyone's mind is what do you do if you don't have majors or departments and what do, what do I do with a Bachelor of Arts and Liberal Arts? And I say literally anything you want. Uh, we have alumni that go into business, uh, 
science like NASA, uh, Stanford, the editor-in-chief of the Huffington Post is also a Johnny. Um, we do really well on LSATs. Um, and we basically support our students academically and professionally. And we do this through our career service office. So you have lots and lots of support to figure out what you wanna do next. This is a departing shot of our Annapolis campus uh, from the dock. And this is a, kind of one of my favorite photos from Santa Fe. Uh, this is just about a t less than a 10 minute walk from our, um, from our main uh, admission building there. So um, this is my contact stream. If, if you would like to take a photo of that, you're welcome to. Um, and again, if you'd like to reach out, um, I would love you to put your questions in the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to remind everyone that any questions you have during this presentation, you can use the Q&A button. And if it is for a specific representative or for a specific school, just make sure to include their name in your question so they know it is for them. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. So hi everyone, my name is Rebecca. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. I'm excited to share with you all the information I can jam pack into just six minutes for you all. So just to get started, um, a little bit about our campuses. So we do actually have three campuses among the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University umbrella, three of which are, or, sorry, two of which are residential. Um, so we have our two residential campuses in both Daytona Beach, Florida and Prescott, Arizona. Um, just some quick facts in geography for you guys. So, um, of course, one of our most popular majors is aeronautical science, which is our flight program. So both of our campuses are either walking distance or just minutes from the local airport. Um, so our Daytona Beach campus in Florida is right on the East Coast in Daytona Beach, about five miles from the beach, about a 10 minute drive um, and literally adjacent to the Daytona Beach International Airport. So our flight students can actually walk right from campus to their flights for flight training. Um, on campus as well, we also have um, about 40 majors um, among all of our campuses. So, of course, you can do much more than just flights, and I'll elaborate a little bit more um, um, uh, along the presentation. But um, our Daytona Beach campus as well is about an hour from Kennedy Space Center, um, about an hour from Orlando as well. So it's a great location in order to get to that bigger city and in order to also be able to connect with alumni that now work at NASA and Kennedy Space Center um, in order to then build connections to get jobs after graduation. Um, in that picture there on the building on the left as well as our College of Arts and Sciences building, um, it actually, that dome you see is the largest collegiate telescope in the Southeast. So it's a great resource for our students, especially our astronomy and astrophysics students. Um, our Prescott, Arizona campus is right um, in the mountains. So a little bit of a different landscape uh, compared to Florida. Um, it's a little bit more elevation there. Um, so if a student wants to um, be among the mountains and go mountain biking or hiking, that's a great location for them. They're about two hours from Phoenix, um, very similar to some other universities that mentioned this earlier. If you're accepted to one campus, you essentially are uh, accepted to both um, or all campuses. So there is a very much of fluidity between campuses. Our worldwide campus is actually our online campus. So for any students wanting to pursue a degree online, um, they can do so at, at our worldwide campus. Our Daytona Beach campus has just over 6,700 students on campus. Our Prescott campus has just over 3,000. And we love to elaborate on the tangible experiences that students would get on campus. So our average uh, class size at our Daytona Beach campus is about 27 students. Our average class size at our Prescott campus is about 24 students. So we also don't have any lecture halls. You'll get to know your professors really well. Our classes are only ever taught by professors as well, never by graduate assistants or teaching assistants. One of the benefits of being a small to medium sized school is actually being, being able to be taught by professors. So these are professors that have tangible experiences themselves in the classes that they're teaching um, and can connect you with job opportunities, research opportunities, um, and be able to help you for graduation. We also have a very strong career services department. So um, they actually have a career expo once a semester with over 100 employers present. And a great tangible experience as well about our admissions process is that by applying to Embry-Riddle, you actually apply directly into a degree program. So if you're accepted, our, our degree programs are so hands-on that you're actually starting your degree program right from your first semester. You don't have to apply to the university, wait a year or two to then um, hear about a decision on your major preference. You'll actually be starting those hands-on classes with your major that you want right from the beginning. 
Um, and our graduates are definitely ready for uh, careers and ready for jobs after they graduate. We have a 94% placement rate. So within a year of graduation, our students are either going to grad school or getting a job directly related to what they studied at Embry-Riddle. We also have over 350 clubs and organizations on campus. Just to elaborate on a few, uh, we also love to mention how students on our campus get a wider world view on campus. We actually have representation on our campuses from over um, 100 countries and all 50 states. So we have a really strong international student population um, and out of state population as well. Um, we have at Division II Athletics. Our Daytona Beach campus is NCAA Division II. Our Prescott campus is NAIA Division II. We also have study abroad if you wanted to take a summer term or spring or fall term to take classes in a different country and acclimate in a different culture. We also do have ROTC opportunities. So if you wanted to um, join an ROTC branch um, while you're on campus, our Daytona Beach campus has all four branches of ROTC um, and our Prescott campus has both Air Force and Army. There are a lot of scholarships available and typically those close about December of your senior year. So definitely let us know if you're interested. We can make sure to connect you with that branch. We also do have over 20 great organizations. I love to talk about it because it definitely breaks the negative stereotype that it typically gets on a lot, a lot of college campuses. Um, and it definitely is not pressured upon our students to join, but is a great way to participate in community service um, and philanthropy and be able to make a lot of connections with current students and alumni. Some notable programs, I'll just touch on a couple. So um, our aeronautical science program is our flight program. So um, if you wanted to get your bachelor's degree and also pursue the licenses necessary in order to uh, become a commercial pilot, you can do so in aeronautical science. We offer both um, aeronautical science at both residential campuses as well as aerospace engineering. For the last 20 years, we've been ranked number one in the nation for aerospace engineering. So if you wanted to work for a company like NASA, um, we are the place to come to in order to pursue aerospace engineering. But we do actually have our entire college of engineering as well. So we offer multiple different types of engineering. Uh, you can see a list of some other programs we offer as well, but we do have about 40 programs. Another one I'll mention is aerospace physiology. We're actually the first and only program in the nation to offer aerospace physiology. Become an Eagle, so to actually apply, um, you can go to our specific website. We are not on the Common App, so you'll want to actually fill out our specific application at that link. You can also use the code DBPC to waive the $50 application fee, so you can apply for free. And then after you apply, you'll want to send us official high school transcripts. We actually are already test optional. We are SAT or ACT optional, and you can submit two letters of recommendation, essay and resume as additional documents as well. And here's my contact information. If you had any questions, you can fill out this inquiry form at the QR code in order to um, submit your inquiry. Thank you very much. We'll leave that up for a second as I remind people that if they have questions for anyone who has presented during this session, use the Q&A button. It's on your screen. And if it's for a specific school, just make sure you mention the school in your question. Up next, we will hear from the representative from Arizona State University. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is David Mills. Uh, I am the uh, Assistant Director of Admission for Arizona State University. Uh, we are located in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, the fifth largest city in the country, uh, in the state capital. Um, for those of you who aren't as familiar with Arizona, uh, yes, we are in the southwest. We are the desert. Uh, it is hot during the school year, or sorry, during the summer, um, but it is absolutely gorgeous uh, during the school year. Um, what I want to tell you a little bit about today uh, is what ASU is all about, uh, our student experience, what that could look like for you, and then, of course, some of the uh, kind of nitty gritty details of how to apply, get accepted, scholarships, and things like that. Uh, so what I want to kick off with is our charter. Uh, this is our mission and values, and every decision we make at ASU uh, is driven by this document. I won't read the whole thing to you here, uh, but what I really do want to point out is that um, ASU measures itself by who uh, we include, how inclusive we can be, and then by how successful those people are when they leave. Uh, so that inclusivity, uh, instead of being a competitive, selective university, uh, we want to make sure that we are open to all students who meet our admission requirements. Uh, we offer guaranteed admission to students who meet the academic uh, requirements for admission to ASU. And we'll talk about those in just a little bit. Uh, but also, we want to make sure they're being successful, both educationally, academically, and then, of course, in their future careers. Uh, so speaking of that, um, I do want to point out uh, we have found a lot of success in that. Uh, last year, 89% of our graduates had a job 
uh, offer within 90 days of graduating from ASU. So we know we're doing a great job with that. And a lot of that becomes uh, is because of our great career services, our great internship opportunities. Being in that fifth largest city in the country in Phoenix is a huge benefit to our students to where they can do internships and get jobs uh, in their career field, building that real world resume, that real world experience before they even graduate from ASU, because a lot of that stuff is sometimes even blocks away from our campus. Uh, and of course, uh, we have a great uh, alumni network as well with over 500,000 members around the world. Um, and again, finding that success on campus, how are we doing with the education? How are we doing with the student experience, our innovation? Uh, you can see some of the numbers there, they kind of speak for themselves, but uh, top five for public universities in both that first year experience, which is critical to student success, uh, and in the undergraduate education as a whole. Uh, and then of course, number one in the university for, uh, in the, sorry, number one in the US for innovation, uh, ahead of some very strong competition, and that's been six years in a row. So always trying to stay uh, on the cutting edge side of the education and the experience uh, that our students experience. Uh, so uh, just some of the things we're especially proud of uh, and a few bragging points uh, for ASU. Uh, now, something that's really good to know about ASU is we are a large public university, uh, but we never want that, that size of our student body to negatively impact our students in the classroom. Um, so even though we have nearly 75,000 undergrad and graduate students, uh, we've maintained an 18 to one student to faculty ratio, uh, making sure we can keep a lot of our class sizes smaller and help our students stay academically successful uh, during their time at ASU. Um, but one of the nice things about a large university is that you have all the benefits of that large university, and that starts with our student body. Uh, we have a ton of diversity. Uh, it's students from all 50 states and 136 countries around the world. So geographically speaking, that diversity, but also students from all different uh, cultural backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, uh, walks of life, socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, you will literally meet anyone and everyone during your time at ASU, uh, just like the real world. So uh, a lot of great diversity there. Um, and then, of course, you have options and opportunities to kind of craft that experience, that college experience to be exactly what you want it to be. Uh, ASU has over 350 majors to choose from, a lot of great rankings across those 350 majors. Uh, we have over a thousand clubs and organizations uh, for you to get involved in on campus. Uh, we are also a top tier research one institution, so a ton of great opportunities outside of the classroom uh, to build that resume and do research as a student at ASU. And of course, uh, if you're looking for that school, uh, that school spirit, that excitement, that game day energy, uh, we are also a Pac-12 Division I school as well. So um, a lot of that uh, uh, excitement uh, throughout your four years uh, at ASU also. So a lot happening at ASU. Uh, the important thing to know uh, is that ASU does have four campuses throughout the Phoenix area. Uh, you've heard this from a couple of the other schools, uh, kind of a little different from many traditional colleges, but um, based on what you study at ASU, you have a home campus. Uh, they can be very big like Tempe with about 50,000 students or a lot smaller like our West Campus with only about 4,500 students. Um, so very different experiences day to day, but you are a Sun Devil no matter what campus you're at. They're all very connected and you can do anything at any campus. Uh, the exception is that you will live at the campus that has your major and always take the classes for that program at that campus. So just know you've got quite a few options at ASU. Uh, even as far as location and campus size uh, is concerned. Um, Barrett is also a great thing I want to touch on real quick, one of the top honors colleges in the nation. It's a great way to take that large school and make it feel small. Uh, it's a community of scholars. Uh, you can be in any major and at any campus to be part of the honors college. Uh, I don't have enough time to really go into extensive detail now, but know that it is a great opportunity. It is competitive and it is a separate application from ASU. So definitely check it out and touch base with us, your admission counselors at ASU, uh, so we can give you more details on that. And of course, there's a map of Phoenix and where all those campuses are located. Uh, so I'm almost out of time. So I'm gonna go pretty quick uh, through how to actually apply and become a Sun Devil. You have three options if you're a senior to apply to ASU. Any of these applications are just fine. We will look at them equally. We are test optional and always have been for admission. So ACT and SAT are not required. We will look at your core classes and your GPA in those classes. Um, just make sure to apply. I'll fly sooner rather than later if you're a senior and we can get you uh, scholarship consideration and you'll have plenty of time to apply for other awards. Um, but for an out-of-state student, our academic merit scholarships are one of the best ways to make ASU a more affordable option. So make sure to send us your academics and your application uh, this fall. Um, we'll get you automatically considered for merit scholarships. Um, and again, I'm pretty much out of time. So I'm gonna leave you with 
our uh, visit website right there and many of the other visit options we offer virtually that are way better than listening to me talk for just six minutes. So uh, come check it out, learn more about ASU um, and thank you all for coming today. We'll leave that up on the screen for a second, David. Oh, um, Sorry. That's okay. If you wanna throw that back up real quick so that uh, people can get that as I invite all of our other reps to come back on camera and microphone so we can do a quick little uh, Q and A over the last eight or nine minutes that we have left in this session, and I'll allow our reps to also catch up on the questions that were in the actual Q&A uh, that was submitted through the button on your screen. So thanks for that. And um, I'll get to play talk show host now and uh, we'll do a little round robin in the order that uh, everyone presented in with a couple questions. And the first one will be uh, a pretty basic question, but it's one that's really fun and helps uh, potential students kind of get a feel uh, before they visit or if they in conjunction with visiting a campus, but it's also just kind of talks about some of the traditions. And so it's uh, what is your favorite campus or school tradition for each of our reps and we will start with uh, Boise State University. Yeah, my, my probably my favorite campus tradition, uh, the very first week of school, especially when we're welcoming on new freshmen, but really just welcoming students back to campus is our Bronco Welcome Week. So we bring truly all that we have to offer for students, all of our clubs and organizations. Um, it's normally paired up with um, some sort of program, like we normally do like a, a paint splatter party for all the first year students by all the residence halls. And uh, it's just kind of a way to go check out clubs, organizations, start building community, seeing maybe where you fit in best, if there's something around a hobby, maybe around your academic area. Um, and we have that weekend before school starts that students move on. So it's really just kind of geared towards getting students out of their comfort zone, starting to meet each other since we have students from all over the world, all over the U.S. coming to campus. There's no party like a paint splatter party, that's for sure. <laughs> Certainly messy. How about the University of Utah? So my favorite tradition I mentioned during my presentation, it is the third down jump, which creates a seismic event when we're watching football. Uh, but I'll mention another one. It's actually a very recent tradition. Uh, it's a, a laser tag night where they take over the uh, Student Life Center. It's a four story building where the swimming pool and the uh, weight room and the rock climbing wall are located. And they do laser tag and it's really at night. It starts at 10 at night and goes till two in the morning. That sounds awesome. But St. John's College. Well, um, as, as many of you know, we're not really big on sports at St. John's, uh, St. John's College, but uh, we do have a really fun tradition um, that was started years ago. The Naval Academy actually challenged St. John's to a competition of any of their choosing. And this was like over 30 years ago. And so they chose croquet. So um, every April, the third week in April, um, there is an annual croquet match against the Naval Academy. And the, it's a big deal. They actually, uh, both sides take it extremely serious. Um, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's tremendous fun. There's like thousands of people that come to campus. Um, and it's a whole day event. And we have one for at least the last five years in a row, um, which is kind of a fun, a fun brag against the Naval Academy. But <laughs> that is definitely unique and just sounds incredibly awesome. That's fun. Embry Riddle Aeronautical. Yes, yes. So um, I did briefly mention as well in my presentation um, that on our campus we have the largest collegiate telescope in the southeast. Um, that is definitely unique to Embry Riddle. Um, so actually a couple times a year, one of my favorite traditions um, is inviting the community to actually view the telescope. So um, everyone in the area gets to utilize the resource that our students get to use um, every day, which is pretty cool. Um, another cool tradition that we have on campus is a spirit rock. Um, so we love always showing Embry-Riddle pride. Uh, we always like to say it's a great day to be an eagle. So um, if students want to paint their Embry-Riddle spirit on a rock near our gym, they can also do that on campus for everyone else to see. Fun. Arizona State University. Yeah, um, my favorite uh, tradition at ASU is what we call the lantern walk. Uh, it's one of our oldest traditions. Uh, it's over 100 years old now. Um, basically how it works is uh, it centers around homecoming in the fall, but the night before the big homecoming game, uh, everybody, uh, students, alumni, staff, professors, everybody hikes uh, to the top of our big, well, it's not a real mountain, but a mountain where we have our big hill with the letter A uh, on it, uh, always right in the middle of Tempe. And everyone carries lanterns up, basically lights up the, um, the city of Tempe from the mountain. They over 
uh, there's a lot of kind of spirit things, cheers, and they announce the uh, uh, the homecoming royalty there for the next day. Um, but it's something that uh, Sun Devils have done for a long time. And so it's kind of cool to walk in their footsteps uh, up the mountain for that that big night every year. The real tradition. Um, I'll continue because we've got about four minutes or so. So we, if quickly, do uh, some pragmatic advice for each of our attendees, either attending live or, or accessing this via the recording, which is, what is the one piece of advice, the one thing that you'd tell students going through the process right now to remember or to keep in mind, the, the one thing that you, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say most important, but just one piece of advice that you would give at this time. And we'll go again in the same order. We'll start with Boise State. And I would say uh, visit campus. I know David mentioned it in his presentation, but this year looks a little bit different. I know, but it can also be to your benefit of being able to virtually tour or, or meet with students and, and staff. So just look into the campuses that you're interested in and see if, I know we're offering in-person tours with some certain rules and regulations in place, but just seeing what opportunities there are to actually get to check out campus and maybe hear from a current student as well as connect with your admissions counselor. Uh, University of Utah. So mine was going to be, and Austin just touched on it, is use your admission counselors. Really, our jobs are very boring if we don't hear from you, and we like to be able to answer your question. We won't have the answers to everything, but we're often a good clearinghouse, so we can connect you with other departments, with financial aid, housing, et cetera. So we're here to assist you. We really like working with students. St. John's College. Well, Jasmine and Austin, I'm going to tag on to you guys. Um, I was just going to say, when I, I remember applying to colleges, I remember also my college counselor telling me I wouldn't get into St. John's, and I did. Um, but I would say definitely reach out to the admissions office, to your counselor, whether you're looking at a big school or a small school or mid-sized school, like don't be shy, uh, you know, call, email, um, take advantage of those virtual visits or in-person visits. Um, and we all have student workers that work for us. And so, you know, I think there's nothing that replaces talking to a current student. Embry Riddle, Aeronautical. Yeah, so I was really just going to say, you know, you know, in this process of looking for colleges and finding your future home for the next few years, um, I was just going to say be unique. Um, don't be afraid to really, you know, find, be honest with yourself, find a place that you think could help you stand out from the crowd and, um, you know, be yourself. You'll have, be surrounded by other students that also attend that university and um, it'll be great to, you know, really find what you're passionate about and pursue that. And Arizona State, last but not least. I guess I'll take a little more of a technical angle for my for my advice. Um, you all hit on some amazing things, um, but I would say um, we are all very helpful and you have a ton of great resources between us and your high school counselors and other resources like that. Uh, but don't be afraid to use the Internet. Uh, don't be afraid to use Google. Uh, you'd be shocked how much great information you can find on our websites uh, just by starting with a big search engine. Um, and of course, uh, be careful just to make sure that whatever does come up, the, you know, the resource is valid, it is trustworthy and, and things like that. But especially if it's from our websites, uh, it's just a great way to kind of help find some of those specific, you know, what research opportunities are available in physics at XYZ school. Uh, you'd be surprised how many great things you can find with a quick, quick Google search uh, if one of us is maybe busy and not emailing you back quite as quickly as we should. So <laughs> sorry about that, but use Google. Well, thank you all for that great advice for everyone, plus uh, sharing a little more information about each of your schools and campuses with the traditions and just the overall great information that you've been able to share with us. And I want to thank everyone for joining us for this session. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted today. Be sure to sign up for additional ones at strivescan.com slash collegewise. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings. Again, same website, strivescan.com slash collegewise. Once again, thank you to all of our presenters for sharing great information today. And thank you all for attending. Have a great rest of your Tuesday.